Today is the 30 year anniversary for the nuclear disaster that happened at Chernobyl. So on this side you can see the name of the different settlements and on the back side you can see black <laughs> and they're crossed out so they don't exist anymore. And I'm telling you this now because Animal Planet has a new documentary that I co-hosted airing tonight. The levels of contamination are lethal. Plants and animals have been living with radiation their entire lives. What's going on? These radioactive wolves. Nature has fought back. We've paid a high price. But there is hope. Life after Chernobyl. But right now I want to talk about the five things that you probably didn't know about Chernobyl. Number one, Sweden sent the first alert. Yeah, this might seem surprising since Sweden is about a thousand miles from Ukraine, which is where Chernobyl is. It was formerly the Soviet Union though in 1986, and we're talking about in the middle of the Cold War, so people weren't talking a lot. The Swedish nuclear power plant worker set the alarms off because his levels of radiation were higher than they should have been. People started snooping around, we pointed our satellites around, and bam, we found out that in Ukraine, reactor number four exploded. Isn't that crazy? Two, radioactive iodine is the first killer. So when a nuclear bomb goes off or a nuclear reactor explodes, if you're not killed by the initial explosion, then really one of the biggest killers is the nuclear fallout. So these radioactive isotopes like iodine-131 fall out of the atmosphere. Now iodine-131 is very similar to iodine, so it's taken into the body just like normal iodine, except this one is radioactive. Now in areas where you have iodine-poor soils, the body readily takes it in and starts to accumulate it, particularly in the thyroid glands. And so those radioactive particles, as they release alpha, beta, gamma rays, start pounding your thyroid. That's why in nuclear fallout zones, you have high incidence of thyroid cancer. But it's also why one of the first treatments for places that have been hit by a nuclear disaster is you give people iodine pills, normal iodine pills, to help saturate your thyroid gland. Fortunately though, the radioactive isotope iodine-131 only has a half-life of about eight days. Three, strontium-90 and cesium-137 are the long-term killers. So here's the deal, you got strontium-90 and cesium-137. Both of them have half-lives of about 28 and 30 years respectively. Now just like iodine, they fall out of the air as dust and kind of get incorporated into things. Well, strontium is seen in your body as a lot like calcium, so your body takes it in, incorporates them into your bone and into your teeth, and that radioactive isotopes just starts pummeling away at your bones and causing a lot of problems. Well, cesium-137 is similar, except that it mimics potassium. So potassium gets incorporated into your tissues, into your muscles and whatnot, which is partly why you don't wanna eat anything like pigs or wild game from a nuclear disaster zone because you will be incorporating that radioactive cesium into your body as well, and you don't want that. Four, radiation in Chernobyl is relative. You're able to track the amount of ionizing radiation that you have via little devices. We were wearing personal dosimeters, for instance, but you can also carry around Geiger counters, and they measure the amount of ionizing radiation coming in. This is a little device that I wear. Let me show you. It turns on. Hi there. And that shows me how my levels of irradiation, radiation are doing. Look at that. Can you see that? Distance is really important. You can be standing close to a radioactive source, not have high radiation, but when you get close to that, you get pummeled. Stuff like that's going to be highly contaminated. If you take the Geiger counter and you hold it up next to it, here Matt's doing it. I'll kind of show him in the background. Normal readings are like maybe 35 or so right here. What's the reading now? Okay, we're just coming up, 130, 150, 62, 70, 80, 90, that's straight over 200, 220, so yeah, we're sitting around 220 on there. 220, so 30 from here, 220 over there, obviously, really high, you don't want to stand over there too long. Five, people do live in Chernobyl. Now this is interesting, it was reactor number four that exploded. And essentially what that means is there were other reactors there. In fact, they were building five and six. They kept operating the other power plants right next to the one that just exploded. In fact, there are about 7,000 workers that commute in and out even till this day, um, doing normal operations to keep those power plants running. Now if you look at a map, there are bright red areas. That's right here. And people cycle in and out of those areas. And if you look at this zone, that's considered an unmanned area. But what we found out 
is that despite the fact that every other site says people don't live in this area, we did find some people who snuck back in and lived there as permanent residents. But I can't share all those details with you now. You're gonna have to watch the full documentary right here. Hey everyone, I'm doing this to share the Animal Planet documentary that airs tonight. Uh, links for that in the comment section below. I also did a sequel to this video, five more things that you didn't know about Chernobyl, which I'm putting on my behind the scenes channel, which you can check out right here. Let me know what you think if you watch the documentary in the comment section below, and we'll see you next week. Life After Chernobyl.